What we have once enjoyed we can never lose. All that we love deeply becomes a part of us. Walking with a friend in the dark is better than walking alone in the light. Faith is the strength by which a shattered world shall emerge into the light. We can do anything we want to if we stick to it long enough. The only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, ambition inspired, and success achieved. Optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched they must be felt with the heart. Keep your face to the sunshine and you cannot see a shadow. Alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. I long to accomplish a great and noble task, but it is my chief duty to accomplish small tasks as if they were great and noble. I take happiness very seriously. It is a creed, a philosophy, and an objective. We could never learn to be brave and patient if there were only joy in the world. What I'm looking for is not out there, it is in me. My share of the work may be limited, but the fact that it is work makes it precious. There is no king who has not had a slave among his ancestors, and no slave who has not had a king among his. Until the great mass of the people shall be filled with the sense of responsibility for each other's welfare, and social justice can never be attained. Your success and happiness lie in you. Resolve to keep happy, and your joy and you shall form an invincible host against difficulties. What I am looking for is not out there, it is in me. People don't like to think, if one thinks, one must reach conclusions. Conclusions are not always pleasant. Death is no more than passing from one room into another. But there's a difference for me, you know. Because in that other room, I shall be able to see. The welfare of each is bound up in the welfare of all. It is hard to interest those who have everything in those who have nothing. Self-pity is our worst enemy, and if we yield to it, we can never do anything wise in this world. Avoiding danger is no safer in the long run than outright exposure. The fearful are caught as often as the bold. Unless we can help the world where we are, we could not help it if we were somewhere else. God himself is not secure, having given man dominion over his work. Meanwhile the desire to express myself grew. The few signs I used became less and less adequate, and outbursts of passion invariably followed my failures to make myself understood. No one has a right to consume happiness without producing it. I am only one, but still, I am one. I cannot do everything, but still, I can do something, and because I cannot do everything I will not refuse to do the something that I can do. Instead of comparing our lot with that of those who are more fortunate than we are, we should compare it with the lot of the great majority of our fellow men. It then appears that we are among the privileged. Face your deficiencies and acknowledge them, but do not let them master you. Let them teach you patience, sweetness, insight. I do not want the peace that passeth understanding. I want the understanding which bringeth peace. You cannot touch love but you can feel the sweetness it pours into everything. Love is like a beautiful flower which I may not touch, but whose fragrance makes the garden a place of delight just the same. All that we love deeply becomes a part of us. Toleration is the greatest gift of the mind. It requires the same effort of the brain that it takes to balance oneself on a bicycle. Once I knew only darkness and stillness. My life was without past or future. But a little word from the fingers of another fell into my hand that clutched at emptiness, and my heart leaped to the rapture of living. Once I knew the depth where no hope was and darkness lay on the face of all things. Then love came and set my soul free. Once I fretted and beat myself against the wall that shut me in. My life was without a past or future, and death a consummation devoutly to be wished. But a little word from the fingers of another fell into my hands that clutched at emptiness, and my heart leaped up with the rapture of living. I do not know the meaning of the darkness, but I have learned the overcoming of it. Things must be felt with the heart. Life is a succession of lessons which must be lived to be understood. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Life is short and unpredictable. Eat the dessert first. 
Life is an exciting business, and most exciting when it is lived for others. Happiness is the final and perfect fruit of obedience to the laws of life. A happy life consists not in the absence, but the mastery of hardships. When we do the best we can, we never know what miracle is wrought in our life or the life of another. When one door of happiness closes, another opens, but often we look so long at the closed door that we do not see the one which has been opened for us. We are never delighted until we try to brighten the lives of others. Smell is a potent wizard that transports you across thousands of miles and all the years you have lived. Many persons have a wrong idea of what constitutes true happiness. It is not attained through self-gratification but fidelity to a worthy purpose. No matter how dull, or how demean, or how wise a man is, he feels that happiness is his indisputable right. It all comes to this, the simplest way to be happy is to do good. College isn't the place to go for ideas. The highest result of education is tolerance. The bulk of the world's knowledge is an imaginary construction. What a blind person needs is not a teacher but another self. Everything has its wonders, even darkness and silence, and I learn, whatever state I may be in, therein to be content. One can never consent to creep when one feels an impulse to soar. The highest result of education is tolerance. Long ago men fought and died for their faith. But it took ages to teach them the other kind of courage, the courage to recognize the faiths of their brethren and their rights of conscience. The best educated human being is the one who understands most about the life in which he is placed. A good education is a stepping stone to wealth. A child must feel the flush of victory and the heart sinking of disappointment before he takes with a will to the tasks distasteful to him and resolves to dance his way through a dull routine of textbooks. The most pathetic person in the world is someone who has sight but no vision. As selfishness and complaint pervert the mind, so love with its joy clears and sharpens the vision. Of all the senses, sight must be the most delightful. I thank God for my handicaps for, through them, I have found myself, my work, and my God. It is better to have no sight than it is to have no vision. The greatest tragedy in life is people who have sight but no vision. The worst thing in the world is not to be born blind, but to be born with sight and yet have no vision. The worst thing is to be born sighted but to lack vision. The saddest thing in life is people with sight but without vision. What could be worse than being born without sight? Being born with sight and no vision. I can see in what you call the dark, but which to me is golden. Worse than being blind would be to be able to see but not have any vision. Blindness is an unfortunate handicap, but true vision does not require the eyes. The infinite wonders of the universe are revealed to us in exact measure as we are capable of receiving them. The keenness of our vision depends not on how much we can see, but on how much we feel. I can see, and that is why I can be happy, in what you call the dark, but which to me is golden. I can see a God-made world, not a man-made world. The greatest tragedy to befall a person is to have sight but lack vision. When you lose your vision, you lose contact with things. When you lose your hearing, you lose contact with people. What is worse than having no sight is being able to see but having no vision. The most pathetic person in the world is someone who has sight but has no vision. It is a terrible thing to see and have no vision. Everything has its wonders, even darkness and silence, and I learn, whatever state I may be in, therein to be content. Knowledge is love and light and vision. There is no better way to thank God for your sight than by giving a helping hand to someone in the dark. As selfishness and complaint pervert the mind, so love with its joy clears and sharpens the vision. Never bend your head. Always hold it high. Look the world straight in the eye. Never bend your head. Always hold it high. Look the world straight in the eye. I can see, and that is why I can be happy, in what you call the dark, but which to me is golden. I can see a God-made world, not a human-made world. It's wonderful to climb the liquid mountains of the sky. Behind me and before me is God and I have no fears. When one door closes, another opens. But we often look so regretfully upon the closed door that we don't see the one that is open for us. 
There is no better way to thank God for your sight than by giving a helping hand to someone in the dark. We can do anything we want to do if we stick to it long enough. No pessimist ever discovered the secret of the stars, or sailed to an uncharted land, or opened a new doorway for the human spirit. Be of good cheer. Do not think of today's failures, but of the success that may come tomorrow. You have set yourselves a difficult task, but you will succeed if you persevere, and you will find a joy in overcoming obstacles. Remember, no effort that we make to attain something beautiful is ever lost. Although the world is full of suffering, it is full also of the overcoming of it. I trust, and I recognize the beneficence of the power which we all worship as supreme order, fate, the great spirit, nature, God. I recognize this power in the sun that makes all things grow and keeps life afoot. I make a friend of this indefinable force. This is my religion of optimism. Do not think of today's failures, but of the success that may come tomorrow. It is a mistake always to contemplate the good and ignore the evil, because by making people neglectful it lets in disaster. There is a dangerous optimism of ignorance and indifference. Christmas Day is the festival of optimism. If I am happy in spite of my deprivations, if my happiness is so deep that it is a faith, so thoughtful that it becomes a philosophy of life. If, in short, I am an optimist, my testimony to the creed of optimism is worth hearing. Deep, solemn optimism, it seems to me, should spring from this firm belief in the presence of God in the individual, not a remote, unapproachable governor of the universe, but a God who is very near every one of us, who is present not only in earth, sea, and sky, but also in every pure and noble impulse of our hearts. My optimism is grounded in two worlds, myself and what is about me. I demand that the world be good, and lo, it obeys. I proclaim the world good, and facts range themselves to prove my proclamation overwhelmingly true. Optimism, then, is a fact within my own heart. But as I look out upon life, my heart meets no contradiction. The outward world justifies my inward universe of good. The test of all beliefs is their practical effect in life. If it be true that optimism compels the world forward, and pessimism retards it, then it is dangerous to propagate a pessimistic philosophy. When you lose your vision, you lose contact with things. When you lose your hearing, you lose contact with people. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. You don't love someone for their looks, or their clothes, or their fancy car, but because they sing a song only you can hear. Literature is my utopia. Here I am not disfranchised. No barrier of the senses shuts me out from the sweet, gracious discourse of my book friends. They talk to me without embarrassment or awkwardness. The best preparedness is the one that disarms the hostility of other nations and makes friends of them. Literature is my utopia. Here I am not disenfranchised. No barrier of the senses shuts me out from the sweet, gracious discourse of my book friends. They talk to me without embarrassment or awkwardness. My friends have made the story of my life. In a thousand ways they have turned my limitations into beautiful privileges. With every friend I love who has been taken into the brown bosom of the earth a part of me has been buried there, but their contribution to my being of happiness, strength, and understanding remains to sustain me in an altered world. So long as the memory of certain beloved friends lives in my heart, I shall say that life is good. What a remarkable woman was, and if you'd like what you have just read and would like to know more about this American icon, then I can highly recommend the story of my life by, which is a fantastic and insightful read. Whether you know her story from books, movies, or have just learned about the woman behind some of the world's best-known quotes. We hope you've been inspired by these beautiful and insightful quotes. Which of these quotes was your favorite? Do you have any other quotes to share with us? Tell us in the comment section below. Helen Adams Keller was an American author, disability rights advocate, political activist, and lecturer. She was born on June 27, 1880, in Tuscumbia, Alabama. We remember this genuinely inspirational woman, the first deaf-blind person to earn a Bachelor of Arts degree. Helen Keller dedicated her life to helping the conditions of the deaf and blind. Winston Churchill called her the greatest woman of our age. 
Here are 100 famous Helen Keller quotes and sayings that will inspire you never to give up, regardless of circumstance. If you'd like to learn more about Helen Keller quotes on life, vision, love, we'd recommend this fantastic read. And share these quotes as you will. Enjoy! Below is just a sampling of Helen Keller quotes. Click on a heading to read more on what Helen had to say about these varied subjects.